everybody, and welcome to a synchronized Wild Ride with Steve-O. I'm just kidding. It's not synchronized. It's juicier than hell. I mean, nothing is off limits for Joey Fatona. I was sitting there this whole episode thinking, wow, this is intense. I mean, we're talking candidly about what it feels like to get timber laked and how it felt to get ripped off by the manager who did apparently a lot worse stuff than just that. I mean, it's incredible how open and unflappable and totally cool Joey Fatone is. So get ready because this one's amazing. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Joey Fatone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, All dude. of you. Thank you. How's it going? Uh, we met, yeah, I want to say it was like 2013 on the set of a Steel Panther yep. music video. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct. And Steel Panther, good guys. What's that? Was that uh, End of the World, I believe, was the video? I don't know. I think it was something like about like humping chicks. Party, End of the World. <laughs> they, were all, they were doing blow. People were topless. It, was, it wasn't my uh, demographic, but it was definitely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and we, we hit it off, man. Like, uh, But people were doing blow in the music video? Yeah, but I don't know if it was real or fake. It was and milk it was powder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it was very, real, very, very yeah. fake. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, and so all, all these years go by. I mean, we exchanged phone numbers that day. We never, never uh, talked. N never talked once. And then uh, bumped into each other here on this cruise ship. <laughs> and uh, what a treat. We're here. <laughs> so I guess being on an Impractical Jokers and Eric Andre cruise... Like, fill it's, us in. How <laughs> it's nice. Well, the long story short, the short story long as far as meeting the guys. I met them from doing the show, The Jokers. So uh, from meeting them in New York and doing a couple of the skits with them, they actually got me a job. I hosted an after-party show for them. So it was like a wrap-up show for The Jokers. So then all of a sudden, they're like, hey, we're doing this crazy idea to do this cruise. I was like, all right, what the hell? For the very first season, I can't remember, it was like four, what, six years ago, probably five, five or six years ago, do this cruise. And every year it's gotten bigger, it's gotten better and better. With I mean, the very first one, I think, was like Lisa Lampanelli and Gilbert Godfrey, I'm saying, with the comedians <laughs> that came out. And then it just kept, Bert came out the year after that. We did battle shots together, Bert uh, Chrysler and all stuff. So all these people just started coming out. So for these guys, I got kind of wrapped up in it, and they're fucking great guys. They are. They're just really good dudes. They're from Staten Island, from Brooklyn. So we have a lot of things in common as far as like the upbringing and stuff like that with our families. It's great. So... <clears throat> Vanilla Ice has been to almost every single gathering of the Juggalos <laughs> for Ice and Pete. You're like... Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You're, you're the yeah, Vanilla you're, Ice of the cruise ship. <laughs> you're, you're the Vanilla Ice of the Impractical exactly. Jokers. It's great, man. So, I mean, obviously, like, uh, you know, the, the, the first question, the only question, like, uh, who in, which member of NSYNC crushed the most beef? <laughs> most beef. <laughs> what beef are we talking about? Because no, the no, team no. can go Lance or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, blew the most beef or what are you talking about? I'm sorry. No, no, I didn't say beef. I didn't, I didn't say beef. I said beef. 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 Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I'd have to smell everyone's fingers to find out. I've got no clue. I couldn't even tell you. You know what's so funny? It was so bad then. Wow. Yeah, your boys are over here pointing yeah, to you. Boy, I'd like to, to let everybody know, like, uh, Joey brought in. I got the peanut in, gallery over here. Yeah, Joey brought in the biggest, uh, what do you call it? Um, entourage. Entourage. That we've ever had a guest bring, and, and it's just great because normally we're in a van and we can't even fit a publicist. So this is great. You brought... One two, one, two, three. And the other and one, the, the the other one left. Yeah, he's so he too, too claustrophobic. I asked who, who got beef. the most beef, and all of your pointed boys me. pointed to you. Which was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. But you know what? I will say there was a lot of lobby love going on. And what that meant is there was always women downstairs in the lobby hanging out and talking to them. So, and it was interesting because a lot of us, though, not me, were younger than what they could have been doing. So obviously in the boy band realm, obviously not to say that we had people saying, oh, you can't do that, you can't do this, but it was just like, okay, well, we're young, we can't be drinking or being crazy or like that. <laughs> well, how, how young were you? Like, I, I was right? 17, 18 years old when I started. Wow. Justin was 14. Oh, wow. Justin was 14, Lance was 16, me and JC were 17, started turning 18, and Chris was the oldest, he was 24. And and what year was was this? 95, when we got together in a group, 95, 96. Oh, wow. And then, you know, years later, but then on tour, there was yeah, there was a lot of smelling of the uh, vag, but not so much of the 
And all right. you guys went into it single, no relationships. Like everybody had no, everybody kind of had relationships here and there. I mean, it, yeah. it went and con. I mean, I, I was dating, I had my ex girlfriend who I was with for a long time. We were married, got divorced now, obviously, but uh, it was more of like, you know, dating. Is a, you want to come in? Can I interview? It's clean. Right? <laughs> So were you guys were you guys touring around when you were under eighteen? Yeah. Uh, so, but we were in Germany, so obviously legal, uh, age for drinking was eighteen, which yeah. is nice. But so, how, how how were you? Did you guys have to sign like a consent over for somebody to kind of chaperone no. you around? Or uh, Justin's mom actually was a chaperone, and Lance's mom had to be happened to be a, a teacher, high school teacher. So she was on the road with us, still tutoring them. And then his mom, his Justin's mom, was like the legal guardian for Justin. Like, or sometimes Justin's mom would leave. Lance's mom would stay, but the three of us, we didn't give a shit because we didn't have any guards. And you guys were just going around on on airplanes, buses? Buses. Uh, we had one guy who was our wardrobe, our, basically our manager, our security, and our wardrobe. We used to have fucking wardrobe. I mean, we used to wear the same clothes. Couldn't even wash them half the time because we were traveling so much. But literally, it was like a, either a bus or a van. Because back in the day, obviously, there was no, we didn't have any money. So during Germany times, about two and a half years, we were out there. And slopping it in bands and a bunch of shit's crazy. Fuck. Wow. So, 1995, right. you form. But when does it pop off? It started popping off in 97 in Europe. Because that's when boy bands were big back then. But here, 95, 96, 97, we're dealing with Pearl Jam, Nirvana. It's all grunge. Mm -hmm. Nobody right. gives a shit about boy bands in the States. So over in Europe, Germany was already popular. So it really popped off for us. It was kind of cool because we were kind of practicing and kind of honing in on our craft while Backstreet started being big in Germany. But then kind of when they opened up the door, it was like, you know, Hanson and all those other bands over in Europe. We kind of waltzed in and be like, oh, boy bands accepted. But then when it came over to the States, it was a little bit different. It was only like Spice Girls, Backstreet, and I think Hanson really started coming in as a, as a you know, pop culture yeah, I music think again. They, they were more of like a flash there, right? I like, guess, but it was just one of those things where it, it opened up the door for, for us. So we, we didn't have to really struggle that hard. And that's saying like, oh, well, we were the first, first pioneers. But I was like, no. People started liking the pop music and we kind of went in and people were like, oh, fuck yeah. So basically we took up a Backstreet Scraps. All the shit that they said no to, we said yes. I love it. How big were the venues? Um, back in the day, Europe, they were probably, they were open just venues. So people were just packing in and they'd just be shoving people. Do a lot more radio shows, but yeah. a lot of times it was maybe maybe 2,300 maybe 5,000, and then again, it just started slowly going bigger, like, oh, well, we're selling out this, I'm doing theaters, and then, <laughs> now we're gonna go up to the States, but it was weird when it started getting bigger, and it was like, what the fuck is going on? Right. It really is, it's really, it's really, for me, I don't know why, I've just always been, not saying humble, but I just always had my feet on the ground, I've never been like, people are like, oh, you're, you're, you know, kind of average Joe shit, I go, yeah, because I'm not gonna bullshit you, what you see is what you get, there's no, <laughs> shtick, <laughs> Even on set when I'm hosting something, you still see my stupid jokes. I'll fuck up stuff. I'll say something yeah. stupid. But it's just, you know, I think because I'm just natural and normal and I'm not trying to be anybody else. And that's what I guess what, what makes my demographic kind of cross the board over, over with everybody. Was it like the new kids on the block where like people thought you guys were one way and you guys would get in the fights? I actually looked up to new kids on the block. That's, a, that's the group that I every time when I first started wanting to be in a boy band or just singing or performing, I saw that. I was like, I want to do that shit when I'm, when I'm older. Why can I get a chance to do that? And it was interesting enough that <clears throat> me pursuing that and going to it and getting to that and then having these people, my peers, and hanging out like boys to men. I'm just saying like different people that I always looked up to yeah. and so many. Then you go, oh shit, I'd love to meet that person. But now you're working with them and doing things with them. It's like, this is fucking great. It's cool. That's crazy. Now, were, were there in sync brawls? <laughs> not really many. <laughs> like jealous boyfriends? Me and Chris, me and Chris yeah. have gotten a couple of headlocks and face. Just over oh, your no, stupid I mean, shit. I don't mean between you guys. I mean like... Other bands and like shit? Je no, like jealous boyfriends of like girls passing out oh, at your shows well, and I, shit. I, I, yeah, well, I mean, there's so many guys that would just want to start stuff. I mean, we were in a club one time and... I, and we, I was literally talking to a whole bunch of women. Some guy comes up and he's like trying to be trying to be cool and stuff. He's like, "Hey man, I heard you fucking gay," and I'm like, "Okay, and what?" And then he just looked at me. I go, "Let me ask you something." I said, "You're talking to me. You're not talking to any of these ladies. Are you gay?" I'm just letting you. I'm just asking. He's like, "Oh no, I'm not gay." He's trying to be like me. I'm like, "Dude, then why don't you talk to these ladies? Have fun. Why are you fucking with me? What am I doing?" Yeah. yeah. Or you know, so many people just try to be wise asses. Or one time it did happen where. <laughs> Me and Justin were sitting at, I don't think I've ever told this story. Me and Justin were sitting at a bar. Uh, it was right after one of our concerts, a couple of us, a couple of security. There was a bar and this one guy was sitting down with his girlfriend. So we come up to the bar, kind of being nice and quiet. People start to notice who we are. So people start crowding around. So now people get a little bit pushed. So me and Justin are literally sitting there. Justin's having a beer. The guy goes to step. He says, hey, excuse me. Justin doesn't hear him. He literally went, sorry, what? And the guy goes, get out of my fucking way. 
And one of our security guards standing up. But meanwhile, the guy didn't stand up. The guy stood up. He was fucking ginormous. <laughs> and we were like, oh, shit. Something's going to go down. He was trying to be all puffing his chest because of his girl. And we are like, bro, we didn't even think. He's like, no, why don't you get the fuck off? And then shit started happening. Security guards started beating the shit out of each other. People getting thrown across. <laughs> drinks were getting spilled. But it's one of those things where you try not to be a dick. And then just pump people just assholes. Yeah. They mm -hmm. can be assholes. They yeah, can. for sure. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> If, if my math is right, you're 1995 until 2002, seven years. That's it. And the Beatles were actually together for exactly seven years. That's crazy. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I would have a tough time believing that the Beatles, during their seven years, sold 70 million albums. Back in the time like that. There, yeah. Too. So, like, I think that that means that... Like, per the numbers, objectively, yeah. you guys were far bigger than the Beatles. When you're that successful, you got to make big moves. Like Kelly Slater, for example. He made huge moves when he started his company, Outer Known. I'm wearing all Outer Known clothes right now. And what's awesome about them is that they're made from organic and recycled materials in fair trade factories around the world, meaning that they're totally comfy, totally classy, totally awesome clothes that do not negatively impact the environment or the people who bring them to your closet. That is Outer Known. I love Kelly Slater. I love Outer Known. And clearly, he loves me too because all of my friends and listeners get 25% off their entire order if they go to OuterKnown.com slash Stevo. That's O-U-T-E-R-K-N-O-W-N dot com slash Devo and remember to also use the promo code Stevo to get that full 25% off your order with all of your outer known clothes. Man, it's epic. It's good for the world. It's good for you. And you got to do it. So go to outer com slash Devo, use the promo code Stevo and let's get back to it. Got a sort of, I'll never forget uh, Steven Tyler said this to me we were at a concert one time this is after instinct you know we split do our own thing i went to go see his concert he goes hey man when you guys get back together again i don't know i'm gonna ask justin he was on tour or whatever he's like dude he goes i'm not kidding he goes the last time i saw the girl scream like that when i saw your show was when i went and saw the beatles in 63 or something like that he saw the mm. concert wow. he goes i've never heard it that loud before like that and i never thought it or took it in perspective like that i really didn't we're not like "Ooh, we're bigger than the beatles but it's interesting enough that's only that it's not a very big span seven years is kind of yeah. short and yeah. it's amazing how much and the longevity of us or just even the group, even now, just because it just, I don't know, I guess boy bands come back and can go and, you know, same thing with music. But mm -hmm. now people are like, oh, we want to do boy band stuff and 90s music now. And I'm like, shit, I'll hire my ass. I'll do it. Right. With the Beatles that, aren't considered a boy <clears throat> band. Sorry. No, you're good. They're, they're a band. Oh, dude, they're the Beatles were like the, no, the, But are they a boy band? Or the time, is that a certain genre? I mean, genre? if you're back in the day, I mean, that's the thing. They always had the, the, the argument, you know, you even say boys to men. Were you a boy band? No, they were a vocal group. Okay. That's the same thing with us. But, however, we do all actually somewhat play instruments. And this is actually one of our shows we played, uh, the song That Thing You Do from that movie, yeah. uh, the Tom Hanks movie. But it's yeah. funny because no one ever saw that we Can't played instruments. Can't hardly wait. Yeah, thank you. So we, we did that, and everybody played instruments. People were like, oh, shit, you actually play? I was like, yeah, but we more vocal group than anything else. And Justin yeah. J.C. did a lot of the writing. Yeah, I mean, a boy band means, like, a group of dudes that just Hanging like out. have millions of chicks like just and just crunched at the crotch. No, but I'm saying like because because one of the stats some was like, you want them to and some you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it said, it said uh, you guys were the highest grossing boy band, but that's not considering <coughs> the I mean, Beatles. But, I mean, right? Yeah, it's but weird. The, but yeah, the, the, the Beatles were a group of dudes who appealed to chicks and Same as thing, such yeah. the boy band I yeah. Gotcha. yeah yeah boy it's band. weird they have people always say yeah boy band vocal group or no we're we're a group and they i don't know i, th I think all it's man band now when you get older what, like what, what are you gonna really say yeah, yeah. Fuck. when you have that such huge success at a young age like that and you're raking in all this cash like, ah. you buy stupid shit God. yeah do, do you just go <laughs> fucking crazy like well like do you have people managing your money do you say i'm, I'm over 18 i'm gonna do what i want you just know? Like, like anything i think when people come into money that fast that have never been into money like that. My family's never come to money like that. So my family doesn't know much about investing. I was a middle class family from Brooklyn. When you got money, you got a paycheck, you fucking blew it. You went and you took your girl out, you did this or your family and half the time you only made a hundred bucks in your account to go, okay, now I gotta pay my bills. So when I had that money, it was just numbers in a bank account. Yeah. 
I mean, I knew it, of course, but I'm like, you know, I'm 19 years old going, you know, Dad, I'm thinking about buying a house. I'm thinking about buying a car. And my dad looks at me and I go, what kind of car do you think I should get? Like, I don't really don't know how much. You know, he goes, dude, my dad goes, you can buy whatever fucking car you want right now. Because <laughs> you can't. You honestly can't. Yeah. I said, really? So I remember, like, slowly I started buying purchases and stuff like that. But then I bought stuff where I thought, you know, again, 19 years old, I could buy my own house. I want a couch that had every cushion was different fucking colors that was custom made. I had a Star Wars room, a theater, that Lily had bought the house, was 250000 I bought the house, and the theater cost me about 400000 yeah. <laughs> The theater cost more than the fucking house, but it was like, I put my hand on the handprint, it hydraulically slid open, it closed, and it had Han Solo in the carbonite, the frozen carbonite. I had the Death Star with the freaking projector. I had a fucking, ma- it was crazy, it was the stupidest shit. But it was worth more but than the coolest shit. But the coolest shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after a while, you start buying shit. And the same yeah. way you said, one of my my first account was like, yeah, you're going to be good. Your family, family's going to be good. This, this, this. But doesn't really explain everything. Yeah. Taxes. Of just everything. Back uh, to the back to the Star Wars theater. <laughs> yeah. So you were gay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a star lightsaber on my face. <laughs> 100%. Uh, I think we were all gay once I, we watched Star Wars. Well, no, and I, I, of course, I kid. Um, but now, I uh, watched the, the Lou Pearlman documentary, like famously, like Lou Pearlman signed the Backstreet Boys, yep. and then he signed in sync, and like... It, he worked and, with a lot, yeah, he, he was a smart businessman for himself, is what I like to call him. Right, um, and and so like the, this whole back and forth between the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, and he was just like he was the middle man, just laughing though, because yeah. what he would do is he was literally almost push a, us against each other, sure. but in a friendly way, going, "Oh, those guys are doing this gig, you should do that." Oh, they're working out, they look better, you should work out more. Yeah, you know, so it was that kind of thing. And then funny because they always kept us apart, not knowing why. And there was a lot of conversations that when we finally started talking to each other, we're like, "Oh, wait a minute." So Lou Perlman's a sixth member with you guys? You two? So he's splitting you guys six ways and us six ways. But wait a minute. He's also a manager, so he's getting a management fee. But then he's also telling us that he can make sure to take care of the lawyers because he has his lawyers, but want to make sure that since he's a sixth member, he's going to secure his ass and our ass. So he was double, triple, and fippling everything. Wow. Then he started a Ponzi scheme. He started telling people, you know, I got Britney Spears, which he did at one point. Like, he's like, I got Britney. I got uh, Backstreet. I got NSYNC. Invest in my company, Transcon. We'll have you go to invest in this thing. It's going to be great, blah, blah, blah. These people are like old retirees, literally giving their money, life savings. And they would say, hey, what are we doing? Oh, it's great. Uh, stock is going up. Let me show you the printouts. Get printouts. And then when they try to collect money, they couldn't get a hold of anybody. And it literally was a Ponzi scheme. He stole like billions of dollars fucking, and just ran. And you're like, wow. why would you do that when you made a legitimate business, though? Right. He legitimately started making his own real fucking business and was really making money, and then he got too damn greedy, which is crazy to me. Yeah. And, and, and like, by structuring it so that he was a member of the band and the management fee and controlling the lawyers, on top of that, like, he didn't pay you what you were rightfully entitled to. Is that no. right? No, and then they were all, well, everything that we were doing was uh, recoupable. That was the fun part too. We thought every time he was taking out to di- take us out to dinner, oh, I'll take you guys to dinner and we'll go here. Yeah, Peter yeah. Luger is going, hey, and then all of a sudden the bill, everything's all up there. One time, the funniest fucking thing, and I remember that's when I was like, wait a minute, something's really fucked up. We were, I remember we were shooting the Tearing Up My Heart video, and we were <laughs> in Miami, and me and Justin's birthday it was around this time, it was around January. He's like, oh, I'll buy you, buy you a gift. I'm like, oh, cool. He buys like his Armani jacket that I saw. I was like, I fucking love that. That's great. Oh, 250 bucks, man, for me, 17 years old. Look at this man's shit. It's on the fucking recoupable thing. So yeah. anything I bought, he bought me a birthday gift, but I was paying for it because it was on my recoupable bill. Jesus Christ. So He's I was like, all right, now there's something fucking shit. wrong here. And even, even the record company is like, I don't know what's going on. We're giving you millions of dollars, but it's not going to you. It's being split, but I'm, I'm hearing getting checks for like 20 grand, 30 grand. That's it. <laughs> so yeah. Sounds like... So uh, we got fucked. Sounds like the way that uh, I've heard YouTubers describe Dan Bilzerian um, managing Ignite. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's just mind boggling. Like, I think when things get to a certain degree or money starts really coming in, and you see a lot of artists like that. I think even Billy Joel's manager, you know, kind of fucked them over. Right. Money oh, comes dude, in so much. Definitely. It's crazy though because you just Cook's can't. Brother. There you go. Yeah. When it comes in that fast and that quick, you can't really est- or try to establish. You really have to have a handle on it or know the business. And again, that's why we're talking about spending money. I never had that business savvy right. or invest or where do I need to fucking put my money and shit. And now, thank the Lord, I do. <laughs> yeah. But the point at which your dad says, 
hey man, you can buy any car you want. Is that like right when you're like receiving like the ten thousand dollar check from Blue Pro? No, this is later on. No, this is later on. No, hell no. I was still living with my parents. I was when we were touring in Germany, selling out places. Uh, venues again, like seven, eight thousand, even ten thousand, but selling merchandise stuff. Yeah, I never saw the numbers, and I was still living at home. I was in my house until I was right. like literally, nine, I think, nineteen years old when I finally got my first house. But we were on the group, you know, two and a half years, three years before that. See, but but uh, what was the funny business with the financials going on around the royalties for the album sales and ticket sales on the the it was the everything. Tour it was everything and across the, the world. Everything. And everything. so. Uh, Man, was there ever it was, any like like litigation to yeah, yeah. get back? Went through a whole thing. We settled out of court. Finally, he basically got a small percentage for like a year, and then he was gone. Is basically what happened. But all the other money that he had prior to gone. I just shit. When um, did uh, when did you get Lou, Lou Perlman out of the mix? When things started going down, we went to and we went to the lawyer, filed out a lawsuit, and then that whole Ponzi scheme started happening after that lawyer lawsuit. Right. People started digging into him. I'm just so. trying to get a picture. Did you did you still have some of the window up to 2002 to, to really do it right and, and get get paid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course. Okay, well, that good. was the thing. The minute it started, yeah, well, that's actually when the lawsuit happened. It was right before No Strings Attached came out, and that was like our big selling one. Uh, that was the one that oh. actually beat all records. It was oh, 1.2 okay. million the first day, 2.4 million the first and, week. And, and sales. You, you had already oh, clear, cleared Lou out of the program. Lou was, order. yeah, Lou was, Lou was, G, oh, was out of the event, go. So it was good. So you yeah, really, you really nice. could buy any car. Yeah, you yeah, we got, we got. We got fucked for a while, but thank God we didn't get fucked towards the really the, the heightened of the actual career because right, that would have been yeah. Good exactly. man, I'm glad yeah. I didn't know that, and I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. really glad to know that. No, thank you. Um, the, now there were also some allegations that Lou Perlman was like doing some diddling. I think I was too old for him to diddle okay. on my doodle. <laughs> I don't think he wanted. I don't think he wanted an old guinea Italian doodle. I think that's seriously. He was always like, he never looked. He was like, hey, hey Joe, hey Lou. <laughs> because I was gonna say, if you're gonna get diddled, at least let it be by a smoke show. Right. Like, yeah, no, no, like, no, 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 God, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that guy was hot. <laughs> That you man. Know, oh. I mean, when he told you that they're working out, you should work out. I mean, he okay. was working out. He was working out. <laughs> he was working out. His, yeah. Yeah. It was weird. It was weird. Because I was always like, did he touch you? Did he say, and I'm, honestly, I'm being dead. I was like, no. He never, I don't, he never like hit on me or anything like that. Every once in a while, he'd be like, oh, well, he hit on me. I was like, but what did he do? He can, did he, he touch can't. you? Did, like, what did he actually, what did he actually, and they would never say, well, he was just being flirtatious. Okay, okay but he's a right. fucking grown ass man. You're young. It's kind of fucking weird. Let's be real here, but. Okay, whatever. To each his own. That's why I feel. I mean, if you're older age, you knock yourself out. But it's weird. Is he still around? No, he died. died in he jail. died in prison. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. uh, how long? When did he go to prison? Oh, gosh. After uh, the Ponzi right scheme. Right after the scheme. Because, yeah. because of the Ponzi scheme? Yeah, he fled the country. Where was he? Do you remember? Like Germany. Yeah. He was in Germany. Like somewhere. No, he was in no like Istanbul or some was weird was fucking like, country. Was somewhere on the beach. Because he got caught yeah. in a hotel that was like with all the water. Yeah, basically, they saw him boys. eating in a picture. Yeah. He was outside somewhere. And they were looking for him. They found him. They grabbed him. Were you guys like, what the fuck? Would have seen well, finally, life. we were like, where the hell is he? No one knew where he was. And when the things started happening, like, oh, he's he, fucked. He went where Russell Wilson... Or is it Ru Russell Wilson, the Def Jam guy? Russell Simmons. Oh, Russell Simmons. Simmons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He went to Asia too. <laughs> yeah. Russell Wilson. Who, is there even a person that? Right. No, but there's yeah, Russell Peters. Yeah. Yeah. There's Wilson. Okay, People so. are Googling Russell Wilson right now, and he's like, fuck. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Um, so, so you're going off, it's crazy, like, just unbelievable amounts of money because now you're doing it right. right. And, and like, you had to get, you, like, you had to have been in stadiums. Numbers don't lie, especially not number two. And when you're going number two, let me tell you how important it is to do it the way that God intended. And that is with Squatty Potty. This is a very important thing that goes in front of your toilet, which you put your feet on to raise up your legs so that you're in a squatting position the way that God intended you to poop. This is how you get a complete evacuation and how you avoid some health risks. I'm telling you. It's important. 
And Squatty Potty is the one product that we promote on this podcast, which I have been using for the longest time. I'm talking about an entire 10 years that this has been helping me poop completely and healthily. And it's time for you to start if you haven't already. And man, they've got a deal for you. Go to squattypotty.com slash Stevo and you will nab 20% off your order. I'm telling you, if you're not using it, then it is bad news. So one more time, go to squattypotty.com slash Stevo for 20% off your order and start pooping the way God intended. Now, Let's get back to it. At that time, yeah, I mean, I, I bought a, a stupid house that was the dumbest thing ever. I've loved it. I had a four-acre house that was 10,000 square feet. My master bedroom was 3,200 square feet. The garage wow. was 3,200 square feet. I had like a man, you know, um, freaking whole cave man Where? Cave in there. Orlando, Florida. Oh, yeah, I got rid of that damn house. But after a while, you know, I loved it. Again, being young, you want everything. You think, oh, this is what I need. I need this. Oh, I need a fucking... The car display that had the turntable and everything. I yeah. had a night ride. I still have the night ride. Well, you don't want to have to back out of a garage. Right. No. <laughs> but, yeah, I <laughs> the but I had a five car garage with this. It was crazy. But after a while, as I got older, I'm like, why do I have, I'm not even home half the time. Or when I had my kid, my kid was on the second floor and I never went up there. Never went up there. I'm like, why am I doing this after a while? So literally got rid of all that shit. And finally, like, went, okay, let's live to California for a little bit. And then saw state tax and said, fuck that. I'm moving back to Florida. For sure. Wow, that's great. Is, oh, is yeah. there a point where, like, you reach such a success that, that like, it, it's hard. You're just desensitized to to anything at all? Because, like, when you're doing stadiums and you right. get that cheer and you get that, like, adrenaline rush, there's nothing like it. Like You know what? For me, being an entertainer, I think it doesn't matter what group or how many. It could be 500 people, it could be five people, it could be five million. Because again, especially with all of us, we've performed in front of less people or more people. But I think it's just the gratification to get that instant, mm. that instant fucking feel. I think you know when people do films and movies, it's great, but you're <coughs> waiting for that. You don't know if it's funny or not. You don't know if it's gonna hit really, unless the audience does it. You get that instant gratification on stage. Man, and that's why I love performing. I'll tell you, you having like your, your little uh, sausage party going on right. over here, like, like hearing them laugh when something's going that adds so much to the experience. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a live podcast. You should. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want these fucking knuckles in a live oh, podcast. Yeah, that's great. So, so <laughs> fast forward a little bit when you, okay, you guys are blowing the fuck up. When does the conversation start happening of NSYNC really starting to, to split? And why does it happen? It wasn't, even, just... it wasn't even a conversation. I think just from, from literally going hard seven years in a row, we were busting our ass for two and a half years of rehearsing the same four songs and not doing shit. Never got a record deal until like almost two and a half years. So mm. we started in 95, literally around 97 is when we start with Germany, left for Germany, did all the stuff, 97, 98, 99, pretty much 99 came to, to the States. Was there 2000, 2001? It was done. So, but it was like one of those things where, Lance wanted to do some do do fucking some being astronaut in fucking space. He literally got I remember that he got yeah. certified being a cosmonaut and everything. Went to Russia, wouldn't do it in the states, so he went to Russia to do it there. Justin and JC started writing music together, but they wanted to do kind of their own things. Everybody was just kind of just worn out a little bit. And we were yeah. like, oh, let's take a break. So Justin was like, I want to write new music, and I think that's where that went to deter because the record company was like, okay, well we see Justin as a young solo artist mm -hmm. now this could be kind of like a Michael Jackson thing or whatever the case may be Let's oh my see god can, he said can, it yeah I didn't mean to well no no it's like it's <laughs> but it's it's very cliche but yeah but like the it, five brothers the one going it, away it, it's so, like yeah. uh, I'm, I'm so sorry I'm, no, I'm, go I'm trying not to like be so rude but when you said no, that I was it. like because when Johnny Knoxville started did the bad grandpa thing like right. like, like we didn't know about it right but um they, uh, they, it, there were, there were stories came out on the internet in 2012 of like, um, you know, Paramount Pictures just bought the domain names Jackass 4, Jackass 4 movie, Jackass 4 Bad Grandpa, like Bad Grandpa hmm. movie, like every, so we're like, oh, like, you know, like, what, 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 what is what? Bad, oh, we got a new movie, this is crazy, like, why, why didn't they tell us? Why didn't they, then we find out that actually, Knoxville's making a movie under the Jackass the banner right. on his own without us, and like. My, so my, how's that really under the umbrella? Right, like, uh, and and I and, and I actually like went on to say like, dude, 
I, I remember it as like the time when Knoxville Timberlake does. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. I, mean, That's I, said, exa- oh. I think a lot of people have gotten Knoxville and Timberlake. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, dude, Knoxville Timberlake does. Now I'm the. I Jackson. never knew that we could relate to something, and that's, that's something that we can fucking relate to by yeah. getting duped by our fucking boys, right? Yeah, Sons of bitches. But he, I get it. But it's weird though. It really is when you go. But how is that? It's weird when you go, now I'm the Jackson 4. Yeah. <laughs> was I'm Tito. Was there I any bad blood? Fucking Tito. Was, was there any bad, bad blood after you guys split and Justin no, was, was just, just... It was just one of those awkward moments of like, yeah, man, cool. And then the record company was really pushing. And what really was... I remember somebody just said this to me a couple days ago and I wasn't even thinking about it. I was like, and, and it made me go back to the thought of being there. And I was like, fuck, that's right. Basically, we did the MTV Awards and Justin was doing his first performance solo. So we were like, okay, we thought, and he was even saying, you know, after we do this, I'm going to do the tour, us will get back together, no big deal. But I think, and it was weird because I think the record company kept pushing, kept mm. pushing, and they kept separating us. It was kind of weird. So we had to go do the red carpet. He's not on the red carpet with us, just the four of us. I'm like, what thought he was going to be? Well, he was going to go, I think, I think, I don't, he was with Britney at the time. No, it wasn't with Britney. Yeah, I think it was post. So he started, he just went and did the own copy. I was like, okay, whatever. We introduced his performance. Ooh. How fucking weird is that? It's like, hey, hey guys, we're here. Here's Justin Timberlake. <laughs> it's so weird. Crazy. It was like one of those things that people were like, oh, I mean, honestly, for me, I was proud of him because he, again, I'm not a writer. And there's a big difference. I'm a, I'm a team player when it comes to a lot of that kind of shit. I don't get so upset like, oh, man, he duped us. He did that. I'm like, no. If that works, it's going to help us out in the long run for all of us if we're able to do this or do something. We're all going to eat in some way, shape, or form. So it's like, for you, bro, if you're going to do that, go knock yourself out. He blew the fuck up. Yeah, yeah well, check this out. <laughs> and then you go... So what happens now? Yeah, <laughs> check this out. There's a, uh, I, I made this crazy video called uh, "Celebrities I Did Cocaine With." Okay, <clears throat> I told this like really like glorious story about Kid Rock. Yeah, what I, what I, what I, it didn't like make the story because it wasn't as big of a deal. But like the I, I met him and all of this happened in Miami on New Year's Eve as 2004 turned into 2005. Okay, and. Uh, as I was driving down to Miami for this party, it was a Paris Hilton party, mm-hmm. and like it's New Year's, so like on the radio I'm listening to, uh, you know, they're saying, and for the you know t- for the 2004 the highest grossing concert tour was like Metallica, right. and they grossed like this amount of money, and then like uh, I'm at the party and I just see Kid Rock and I'm like, oh damn, this is kind of stoked. I started talking to right. him. And I said to him, because it was just fresh in my mind, I go, man, can you believe Metallica grossed, like whatever it was, like $100 million or right. something? And he <clears throat> hears me say that immediately. He goes, yeah, but those dipshits split it four ways. Like, I like I take it all myself. I make way more than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. We, yeah, it's true, though. That's the other thing. You know, you split it different ways. You're like, okay, wait a minute. And that's why it's the same thing with Justin. It's like, and, I, and I would say the same thing. Let's be real. If I had my own, if I did my own brand from the ground up though afterwards, even though, okay, we were on, you know what I'm saying, John, I'm just saying you did your own brand. Yeah. But if you can collaborate, great. But if I'm going to make my own brand, don't steal my thought. It's weird. I don't want right. to like, it's, but I'm a team player. I don't get mad at it, but I'm like, yo, let's do something together. Let's collaborate. Right. And then you do your own shit, but let's collaborate together. Yeah. Right. Did you try making, or did you try going the solo route as, for yourself? Yeah, but for me, again, like I said, I'm always an entertainer. So what happened was, is after with NSYNC, I started doing uh, Broadway. I always wanted to do Broadway. So I did oh, Little Shop of Horrors. I did, I did, cool. yeah, on Broadway. did Food yeah. Network, this show, that I hoarded movie, myself that... out. I did it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's fun. That's my, that, the thing for me is I love, again, entertainment, but I love the different things. And what was great about me now is like, I didn't need to do it for the money. It was, is it fun? Fuck yes, let's mm-hmm. do it. It's a cooking show? I love cooking. Let's go. Yeah. It's this? Let's go. You know, that, so yeah. for me, that's the nice thing about what I get to do now is I get to pick and choose. The nice thing about who I do is that I get to pick and chew. <laughs> yeah, dude, Blue Chew. It's the Blue Chew tablet. It's got the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. So you know when I chew it, it is on with my lady and I am going to perform at the top of my ability. And that's why I love it. And that's why I think you might love it. And you can get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. What do you got to lose, man? You go to bluechew.com, use the promo code STEVO, consult with the medical provider right online. It's 
takes a couple minutes, couldn't be easier. Your prescription's taken care of. And again, an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets on its way to you. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. So if you've been wondering if you might really enjoy yourself after a Blue Chew tablet, it's time to stop wondering and start chewing. Yeah, dude. So one more time, go to bluechew.com, use the promo code Stevo, and enjoy an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. Just pay five bucks for shipping. Now let's get back to it. I mean, hey, we're on the Joker's cruise. They ain't fucking paying us shit, really. Come on now. <laughs> but we're because we love it. It's fun. These guys are fucking great. They're good friends of mine, so I, I do it anyway for them. Yeah, and you guys both were on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, dude. You got on that, there. Man? Like your early adopter, season two. Season four. Season uh, four, close, season four. Well, then Wikipedia's got you wrong. No, they got me wrong. It might have been Nick Lachey or some other fucking boy yeah, bander. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I read it as... Uh, McIntyre might have did too. I think it might have been. Joey McIntyre from New Kids. Okay. Drew did the first. Don't ask me how and I you remember this shit. That Wikipedia said that you came in second I place did. Correct. on season two. I think I read that second right. Second place, season four. And then I did the alum season and got kicked off the second week. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, How far did you make it, though? I, I made it six agonizing weeks. Isn't it and fucking I was, grueling? I was absolutely the second worst dancer. But I was, was like... Was Master P the first? I think Master P's one of them up there, though, too. Uh, this Steve guy. Wozniak was on Steve's my season. Steve's a good one, too. <laughs> yeah. Why was it so grueling? I mean, was it like I mean, just the dance rehearsals? Was it like that when you were yeah, yeah, oh, training no. for tour? But even well, Dancing with Stars was different because for me... We danced, but nobody critiqued us on it. So dancing and then trying to have somebody correct your shit and tell you you're doing wrong when usually you're doing things right dancing-wise, you're like, okay, let me figure this out. But right. I knew my left right, but I didn't know posture and frame and all that shit. My body was hurting in ways that I've never felt before. Seriously, it was just awful. But mm -hmm. again, I think what's cool about it is, is <clears throat> we're talking about things for me is you know when you have when you're in a band you're you're in sync you're not identified as anything else same thing when you first start your jackass there's no name really attached to it until you start branching off and doing your own shit so when I started doing my own things it just helped me with my stuff and like doing Broadway and then opening up so Dancing with Stars one of the things that saw people saw my personality well yeah I mean even season four you're such an early adopter that that's the point Still where know. Dancing with the Stars was just like absolutely like the Midas touch for like, for reviving we got careers. a call well I got a call the first season and I saw the video and it was called Strictly Come Dancing in Europe yeah, they yeah. called me up and said hey we love you to do it I said nah, nah, nah there's no, nobody wants to see me dance why second season me and my manager start going what are the numbers yeah uh, about 3 or 4 million okay what about the third season we got 10, 15 million okay yeah. what about the third one 20 do you want to come back 20 yeah. and then we come up and it was like literally 32 million was my I think it was my season season 4 or whatever Jesus. and it was like a, yeah. it was one of the biggest ones which was just cool again but it's so weird how, again, when if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Meaning the show was great before. You see how they started adding more production value to certain things, mm -hmm. more different things, which helps it, which is great. But the original content, the original thing is what got the celebrity there. and the pro dancing and critiquing that, nothing else. I, I don't even know how like the production value changed. I just think that... Um, you know, like anything else, if you just beat it to death so much, it's just going to get tired. It just slowed down, like you know? Everything. It slowed mm -hmm. down. And, and when you got on it, it was like really a vehicle for it was like... brand new and people like, were like, oh yeah. And, and, and it was like prestigious, you know? It was like, oh man, you got to be on Dancing with the Stars. Right. But like as like they kind of beat Influencer it to death, Billy! You know, it was like, <laughs> yeah. who's that guy? I don't know. Well, yeah, and it, and it started to like show signs of like being, you know, a, the, the, the desperate last throws Right, of, uh, you know, of like, and they so, keep it goes in waves to me. It's like I've watched it a few times. I don't watch it obviously, but it's always funny because I have watched the first episode a lot of times of whatever the first season is. Because you start to watch them and you know how many people are shitting in their pants. They're freaking out. It's hilarious to watch the nerves of people that are usually normally right. confident. Oh, dude, break, dude. I'm perfectly comfortable, like, you know, putting something right, right up my butt. You know, like like. But to do a quick a, quick step, but to, but, but to yeah, but to, uh, seriously, like, I mean, and and I'm like so helplessly Caucasian when it comes to dancing. Like, I mean, there's just no amount. Who's of, your Who's your uh, partner? I have the same partner as Lance Bass. So you had a a a, a Lacey, God, with Lacey Schwimmer. Schwimmer. Yeah, Lacey's awesome too. But she'll yell at hell. She'll probably yell at shit. She probably yelled at you about a lot of shit. I mean, you were like. It's crazy because we think of NSYNC as like all, all four guys dancing like perfectly together, like in sync. Right. And, and uh, you, it never really occurs to you that there's uh, like a weak link in the two because you guys don't all feel like. But in fact, 
there really was a league, a, a, a weak link, yeah. you know? And for you to go on Dancing with the Stars, of course you're going to go in second place because you actually, that was the strength. Right, and you're my left and my right, so I kept telling them. Yeah, but, like, but, yeah. but Lance was kind of exposed, like, like uh, as if, like, Nikki Six was going to join, right. like, uh, you know, <laughs> playing bass with the Stars. <laughs> yeah, he was a deer in headlights in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but again, like, it is. It's, it's crazy to see people, like I said, yeah, you see them break, man, on stage. Like, these people are like, dude, I looked up to your, your athletes are like fucking just they're they're in it at the, yeah. any athlete that does dancing with the stars they because there's it's their drive they've been trained that way so they're they're fucking focused yeah. that way me i was like if we fuck up let's have fun who cares mm -hmm. who cares was it like that for broadway or is that more grueling than dancing it's with grueling the stars? i think it's it's grueling because you're doing eight shows a week and you're doing yeah. i did it for my, the, when i did rent the first time i did rent i did broadway i, I want to do it i had an audition they're like well no you can get the part i go no no what if i suck so let me audition. So let me show you if I can do it. Yeah. But then you do eight shows a week, and I did it for six right. months. Different dynamic though, because with Completely. that you're doing the same thing. It's the Over. repetition. Over. So you're not worried about whether like you're gonna get it right. You're so used to doing it. Of it course, can you're gonna get it, right. it happens. Yeah, but it's like yeah, Cirque du Soleil, happens. like. Right, Those, but like, there's not 20 million people watching, and you only have one chance to do true. it, and it's and it's like a new dance every week. Mm. Yeah. So you're not like you don't have a routine true. that you're used to. Yeah, it's a you're new learning dance something every new week. every yeah, every week. You're learning something new for dance, and true, true. But the thing is, and that's what's scary. And though. on Broadway, they're not bringing out a judge of. of tell assholes you what the fuck's going on. To, like, completely <laughs> crap all over you. Yeah, that's you know, true. like they like their job is to make it entertaining by absolutely tearing you yeah. to shreds. Hmm. So Good yeah, times. so it's uncomfortable. <laughs> and like, and and the night before the season premiere, I was newly sober. Mm. So like, I, it was like the season premiere was like my one year anniversary, and um, like I remember I was still living in my little like dingy halfway house, sober living. Mm. And, and it's the night before. The next day is the live. It's going to be 20 million people watching me on the season. The, the like, season the premiere, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't scrubbing sleep. Scrubbing toilets. I can't sleep. I'm looking up at the ceiling in my in my little bedroom, and I'm like, ah, like I, I I can't do it. I can't do it. I gotta back up. I'm gonna show up, and I'm just gonna tell them, guys, I'm sorry, but I quit. I just can't do it. And like the 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 it was agony. It was pure oh. hell. The agony of how terrified I was, well, how uncomfortable sleep. I was, and 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 I can't believe that there haven't been people that actually did back out on right. the day. One or two. I think one did. I can't remember who it was. It was one season that somebody, just as they were about to come in, somebody came in because they backed, they freed, they fucked this, I'm not doing it. Well, that it sounds is, like you know, it wasn't on the night of no. before. They don't have alternates no, no, for no, the no, night no, before. No, 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 yeah. It's just one of the, it's, it, it, it's in, like I said, when, when, when it's in our, when someone shells his shoes, you feel it, it's, a, it's the most nerve-wracking thing when it's out of your element, completely out of your element. And Dance with the Stars is, is one of those things, I think, for a lot of people. It's just the fact that it's live, 20 million people are watching, I'm terrible you at it. You fuck up, you fuck and up. And like, yeah. even worse, <laughs> even the worst, like when you're newly sober, you're just so emotionally frayed. You're just like, you're, you're like you're, this, yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Big, one big exposed nerve. Ugh. It was like the most like, ill-advised thing. I thought it would be safe, you know? I thought it'd be safe. Like, oh, I don't know if I should be in entertainment anymore, you know? Like, now it's like I'm supposed to live a spiritual life and right. deflate my ego. Like, what's being Steve-O from Jackass gonna do? Like, right. how's it gonna work? I'll test it out with Dancing with the Stars. Nothing could go wrong. I rehearsed down the road. I don't have to be crazy. <laughs> just just dancing. And then all of a sudden, wait a second, you know? And then it finally hit, yeah. No, it's, 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 again, it's one of those eye-openers. And I, it's so funny because so many people have, have called me up and said, hey, they asked me to dance their stars. What do you think? A lot. I've had so many other celebrities. I'm like, dude, just do it. What is it going to do? Well, I don't know. My career Who gives a. F this is not your career. Dancing, well, if you're, you know what I'm saying? But, but that's the thing is that it's a it shot is. in the arm for your career because it's putting you in front of millions of people. Why not do to it? To give you like. Uh, you know, give you exposure, yeah. like oh, remind Again, people opened, of you. It opened it, up my demographic. It, 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 and mm -hmm. Dude, all of a sudden, like you, you can't eat at at uh, old people's Sizzle. happy hour. Honda <laughs> <Sizzle. laughs> <laughs> Rosa. Wait, what do you call that? Like uh, a happy hour for old people? The early bird special. Early bird special. <laughs> yeah. The Denny's. Yeah, you're getting you're getting mobbed by old ladies at the early. Bird. It is. It's true because yeah. one time I saw a family. The family legitimately came up. The lady was like, the woman was like, oh my god, do you know who he is? And kids are like, huh. So he's from NSYNC. And the grandma's like, no, he did Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was like three or four different things. They're like, no, he did The Mass Singer. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. So that's the fun thing about my career, thank God, that it's spanned over so much different yeah. demographics and stuff that I'm still able to do certain things. And so far, no one told me I sucked yet, which is good. See, that's epic. No one told me I sucked. Dude, how talented is uh, Tom Bergeron? Fuck, man. 
Unbelievable. But the produ- producer of all that shit. He was, he was shit. the host. He's he the host. The host. Dance, like, it, wasn't he, didn't he do America's Funniest Home Videos yep. too? Yeah, America's like, he's like the gold standard of a of a, a, a host, show, a, a host. pinnacle host that gets it. He the underlying tones on things that he says, yeah. some things that he said. Yeah. You know, just the delivery on everything. Is it, I'm, I'm trust me, they, they should have brought his ass back. He's great. I, I can't believe that. Uh, I, 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 I Tom, we know. miss you, bro. Seriously, if you're watching this, what you would probably Yeah, what's he doing that. now? I mean, he's I mean, creating dude, the like, next collecting biggest... Collecting checks, chilling? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I have no, no idea, but he's just... I consider him like... Uh, he's the best. Yeah, like Rodney Mullen of yeah. skateboarding is... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. all he is. He, mm-hmm. when people... Exactly, when you meet him, too. You're yeah. always like, look, okay, this guy's a host. What the fuck? He's, he's great. He really is. He's just... A, he gets it. He just gets it. What I love about he, him. He impressed upon me early the importance of daily meditation. Oh, really? Yeah, no good. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm a big fan of, of that. Um, okay, so now recently, like, uh, you know, it shocked the world. There's a new sync song for the new Who Trolls knew? movie. Who knew? Yeah, Trolls 3 so, came like, out. So, like, I mean, not that we wouldn't have, had, like, wanted to have you on, like, at any time, but it's just so exciting that right in this moment, right. like, InSync has reared its, its weird. Its yeah, we came, we came from the death. <laughs> yeah, yeah InSync is is back, and and like uh, they got a new song, and there's rumblings of a new tour, and like, and they're like, uh, when? And everybody's like, we don't know. Are I you? mean, the thing is though that like, to, like Kid Rock said, you know, like why split it four ways? In your case, from five ways. Five ways. <laughs> so like, when you could keep all the money yourself, and from the perspective of. Like the, the the label or whatever, like the management, like you gotta like it's the, the, that many more hotel rooms, that many more babysitters, that many more. So it like, adds up, it adds up, it yeah. adds up. I mean, so, you see Backstreet going out right now. Half the time when they go out, they don't got a band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why? It's cheaper, right? So I'm just saying, just travel and everything, right? But it, it yeah, it's that's what you're saying. I'm sorry, drop. No, I mean, it's just, there's there's incentive on, on all sides for if you can get away with one person doing it, then why the hell would you do it with right. five? I think I think what it is is uh, as far as us doing for me, I can only speak for myself, but I think the nostalgia wise yeah. of it, why not do it? Um, yeah, money wise, this would be freaking amazing. It'd be crazy just because again, a lot uh. of people haven't seen it. We're the only group I think as far as any boy band hasn't gotten back together. Backstreet's yeah. done stuff before, right. new kids, boys to men, like all these, all these bands. Except, you know what? Like the Spice Girls, Victoria Beckham Victoria, wouldn't yeah, do she it. She wouldn't do it. Yeah. God, what is bitch. wrong with her? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, yeah. My, my girl loves the Spice Girls so much. Like, but it's uh, like, why wouldn't you do it? Right. Dude, I just remembered that I have two Justin Timberlake stories. Oh, God. Like, I was, I was I gonna, it. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna ask you. Like, uh, if throughout it all, like, do you have, like, a relationship where you're in touch? And, and yeah, and we all talk. Yeah, we still okay. talk, of course. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because we still do merch together. So our merchandise, we still have to go, okay, do we approve this? We like this shirt. Are you guys okay. on a group chat? Group chat, email, everything. Ah, yeah. dude, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was coked out of my mind in 2006. And How do you maybe, remember you know, it then? If you were I mean, I'm just that crazy, it's with unbelievable. I've, I've got this crazy memory for dates. Actually, it was specifically Super Bowl weekend okay. in Jesus. Miami, and I'm pretty sure it was February of 2007. <laughs> and you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, Super Bowl is always in February. I'm pretty yep. sure it was 2007. Um, I think it's the day after the Super Bowl. I'm still awake. We're at this hotel in uh, on South Beach. Um, I'm with this chick. We're having like breakfast or lunch or brunch with Johnny Knoxville. Mm-hmm. I'm just so I'm, I'm coke that he's like literally just putting Xanax bars in my soup. Not trying to hide it. He's just dropping Jumping it in the soup, and I just scoop that th- that bar with my spoon, and you know, like down go the Xanax bars. But it doesn't even bring me down. I'm like King Kong, and you shoot him with a dart, and he doesn't even care. <laughs> and like, I gotta take a leak. And so I'm like going to go like kind of look like over by the pool to like uh, or whatever to like go pee in some bushes or something. And here's Justin Timberlake walks right by. Now, mind you, Justin Timberlake, he didn't perform that Super Bowl. That Super Bowl was performed by Prince. Okay, that's what rained. That's why it rained on Prince. I was there. Because it was very, very, very. Now, Justin Timberlake walks by. I go, dude, because I've seen the Super Bowl the day before. I'm still awake. Prince performed the halftime show. He totally got rained on. And I had major beef with Prince because I had met him and he was like super addicted. Oh, the same stuff. Same, same Super addicted same. to me. Go ahead, Prince keep going. We'll talk about it in a minute. <laughs> Prince was such a dick to me. So I stopped Justin Timberlake and I'm like, dude, it gave me so much joy to watch Prince get his ass rained on. And 
I just like want you to know that I am keenly aware, or however I put it, to, like like his dancing is just so pathetic <laughs> compared to yours, and I'm glad he got rained on. <laughs> You know, and it's like J- J- you know, JT's like, okay, like, kind of okay. And, and I'm like, I'm going to take a leak. And, and, and he's got this, like, super fancy, like, exclusive bungalow. Right. Like, like his, his bungalow. And it's like, oh, you want to take a leak? He's like, dude, come on in here. But I got to go. Like, he walks no, off. I just he walks off, leaving me. With the in bungalow. His, in his bungalow. <laughs> all of his stuff there. <laughs> I swear, I looked around. I was like, like. I I could just rob everything in this room. Like, I could just, like, he's out of his mind. How did he just let me in here? I'll just make sure you close the door when you leave, buddy. I gotta go. <laughs> what a like, giver. Yeah. God. What an absolute <laughs> lunatic. No one even brushed his teeth in your balls. <laughs> <laughs> he's like grinding you your should have shoved his toothbrush up your ass and slammed it out of the grill. <laughs> Yeah, but but I, I didn't. I was I was I was super respectful. I I I I, I peed. Uh, I, I peed. I left. I closed the door. Oh, it's I, fucking like, good. Uh, yeah, the almost, Prince is an asshole, by the way. Prince, yeah, let's talk about Prince being a jerk. What was your what, was, what happened okay. to you? Uh, I, I had this thing like I, I you know I graduated from clown college. I like had I'm a prolific performer of bar tricks. I had this one like standout bar trick that was above all my other ones. I have a cup of uh, uh, like a cup of liquid, whatever. I just need. Here's this cup. I'm gonna balance it on my head. When I let go, you know, I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna put my arms down by my side. And while I balance this drink on my head, I'm not allowed to raise my arms, and I have to drink it without spilling a single drop. You know, yeah. and it would be like if I could do that, would it be worth a free drink? And of course, it is. So this is how I used to get free drinks. Right. Whenever I would see celebrities, I would find the cup and perform it for them. So I'm with this chick, and I was at the time I was dating like a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. Must you know, be nice. This this, this famous <laughs> you know model from Denmark, and Prince is like talking to her, you know, because she's like a Sports Illustrated swimsuit right. model, and like. And I'm performing my trick for Prince, so now I'm balancing. I lay down right. on the ground, I pick up my knees, and with my knees, I pick the drink up right. off my head, put it on the ground, pick it up, and drink it. And while I'm performing the trick, Prince turns to my chick, the model, and he goes, does this impress you? Like, just like such like the most dickheaded. Dick. And she goes, and she goes, yeah, it's actually pretty impressive. You should check it out, <laughs> you know? And right. like... And uh, and he just kind of scoffs at it like like uh, you know and he was just like overall just an absolute <sighs> you know I don't know if he golf clapped me when I was done or whatever but it was just like <laughs> he, he was intentionally as disrespectful to me as he could have possibly been and that's my take yeah, on it. I don't understand why certain people like that and he was one of them we had a party right after an MTV awards show in New York this was the year that I believe I watched Danny Bonaduce get thrown on his face by, what's her face, uh, uh, the wrestler, China. China, okay. When she had that Wonder Woman outfit on, whatever it was. I don't know why I remember that shit, because she had big boobs. Um, <laughs> C- Club Called Twist, party, it was Nelly and Insync's after party. Official after party, every in that place is a celebrity. There's no people that came in, or this and that, some producers, people, everybody's celebrity. Back in the day, it was a wind-up camera. So I'm taking pictures with yeah. Lisa Left Eye, Timberland, Busta Ryan. And, oh, shit, yeah. Up in the second area, this VIP area where, where InSync is and a couple of the people, is Prince. I'm like, fuck, Prince is here at the fucking party. Let me go up there. I go up there. I'm watching. He's talking to somebody. I'm on a balcony looking down at people. There's nobody really up here. He's talking. He's talking. The person walks away. I go, great. Now's my time to talk to him. Mm-hmm. I go, hey, Prince. You know, Joe. He goes, hey, no, you're okay, man. Hey, do you mind if I take a picture? He goes, no, nah, I'd rather not. And turns around <laughs> just like that. But turns around as if to talk to somebody and there was nobody there. <laughs> so he went, yeah, I'd rather not. Wow. <laughs> and looked around and I was like, this motherfucker. I was like, are you serious? Like, I, you know who? Yeah, Joe, I know you're on. Uh, congratulates. Great. You mind if I take a picture? No, nah, I'd rather not. I'm good. Oh, man. I'm, wow. I'm, 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 I just I'm, felt, oh. Yeah. I'm totally debating Crushed. like whether or not I should reveal that like what you described like almost verbatim. It wasn't to me. I just witnessed it really? happen. Like uh, was my second JT encounter story. <laughs> 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 what it was was we, we were we you were should have fucking said I hate that we, shit. We, we were in some like uh, I don't know exotic locations, maybe international. I can't remember where. 
I believe it was during shooting Wild Boys, and it was just random that like that uh, you know here's yeah, I think yeah, I think he was with Cameron Diaz okay. at the time, and. Um, so it. maybe it's a little bit more permissible because mm. he's like with the lady and like kind of like leave him alone. Yeah, but if he knows who you are, but, but he, it like, wasn't. It wasn't me, and it wasn't. Uh, gotcha. It was, okay. it was. It was a member of the crew. Gotcha. But still, it might have been Shauna. I think it might have been Shauna really? Zablo. And um, and and I think it was like, oh hey, like uh, <clears throat> I think it was like she's like, oh hey, Justin, like uh. <clears throat> I hate to bother you, but I'm a big fan. Like, you know, I'd love to get a picture. And he's like, "Oh, you don't want to bother me? Like, don't do it." <laughs> <laughs> I love when people go so up though and they go, I "Hate to be an asshole." I'm like, "That's who that you are." Well, yeah, yeah. Like, I, like I don't mean to interrupt you. Oh wow, that, that's interesting. What is the plan? <laughs> <laughs> but for yeah. me, it's yeah, I've always been. I don't know. For me, I've always been. If unless I'm doing something, I will yeah. stop and take a picture. Like one time I was literally in a theme park arguing with my wife and somebody came up like, yo, not right now. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm fucking arguing with somebody. What, what about f- while you're eating? Hate that too. <laughs> yeah. Annoy- yeah. I mean, there's always a time and place for everything. And I get mm-hmm. it. You want to do that. Wait after. Or if you can't wait that long to fuck. I mean, I had, we were at a hibachi place one time and it was my whole family sitting with me. And then it was another family on the other side. So this one woman literally comes up and says, hey, uh, my daughter's recognize you. Do you mind if I take a picture? I said, yes, not a problem. Here's the deal. When you guys are done with your dinner, since people, I even said, fucking explain it to them. Once you're done with the dinner, tell me when you want to see you guys done. I will walk outside with you and take the picture. Just because I don't want anybody, won't bother. Just, I'll quietly walk out with the picture. Come back. No problem. Yeah. As the dinner is still going on with them, we just sit there and start ordering. The girls are taking pictures across the whole time. Flash goes off. She's like, I'm like, they're taking pictures while she even asked. I said, yeah, after we're done, I'd be more than happy to take a picture. I'm talking about family, hanging out. Finally, lady comes back up. She's a little drunk now. She comes up. She goes, hey, oh, can we take that picture now? I said, ma'am, I've never really been rude. I said, but you asked me to take that picture. I go, yeah. And I said, I would take it after, right? Yes. Well, why were your daughter taking pictures the whole time we were sitting there? She goes, no, they weren't. I go, let me see their phone. Because I'm not going to let them show you my phone. I said, well, then I'm not going to take the picture. I'm sorry. Yeah. Have a good day. Just like that. <clears throat> Two seconds later, I get the smack in the back of my fucking head. My mom goes, you get the fuck out there right now. I take that photo. And I went, okay. Because <laughs> my mom was right back there. And she was like, you go out there right now. And I was like, but she was rude. They were taking pictures. Yeah, that's How old were you? 30. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally, it's probably like 29, 30. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. I wish I had oh, your always. mom with That's an me Italian all the time. mother. Oh, dude, she'd smack the shit out of me. I get the shoe. She picked it up. Yeah. Like, literally, right in front of me. like, what is your problem? The other reason why you're here, you go and say hi to them. I go, yeah. I get it, mom, but I'm, I'm taking a shit. So, no, you do. Right. And then, then you go outside and the lady pulls a prince on you and she turns away. <laughs> Correct. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. But yeah. it's weird because people, but again, when you do that, and it, uh, it's always a time and a place, we say. But then there's always people that just take it to that next level. Yeah. That you're mm-hmm. like, come on. I mean, we get it. We're all here. We're having fun. Because like one time, speaking of Justin, me and Justin were out just not too long ago. He happened to be in Orlando. We went to a bar. We're hanging out. A woman comes up. And we're having just a, just a deep conversation about it. So we're outside. Nobody's around. She goes, hey, do you mind if we take a picture? You know what? Yeah, sure. No, take, we take the picture. She goes back in. Two minutes later, we bring five or six people. Oh, my niece and my aunt, my cousin. I said, ma'am, I said, we just took the picture. We're actually having a conversation. <clears throat> Is it okay that we don't take this picture? We took one for you. Well, that's rude. How is that rude? Mm-hmm. We're in a conversation. I took a picture with one person, but now you want, come on, what is? Yeah, she that's what gets shown on TMZ. Your, your she, public domain, someone told me I was public domain. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> kind of. He's public domain, we, we need him. You yeah. can come out and say, do whatever you want. That, I, I'm like you, like I'm, you know, I, I kind of go through phases of it. Like uh, I'm, I'm generally really, really good. The only thing is that there's a certain point. Like, I don't know if it's around, like, 30 take a photo encounters, like, maybe 50. Right. Take, but, but I absolutely have, like, a cutoff point right. where, where I just can't, like, joyfully participate in an encounter anymore. And it's nothing like... And it's not even really their fault or it's just... It's nobody's fault. It's no. absolutely perfectly normal people. But I go up from, like, can, oh, can I get a photo? Absolutely we can. Like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. really, like... You know, and and uh, you know, I, I put effort into, like, but right. uh, up to a certain point when I've had just so many encounters, like I just don't it have gets, it. In you're me. just yeah. like, give me the fucking photo. <laughs> yeah, or the well, that's the thing. They'll like, hey, can we take a photo? Yes. Or sometimes I'll <laughs> yell at people as they're taking. Do me a favor, get your camera ready. So mm-hmm. just so you know, because the minute they go yeah. to get the, oh, I got to flip. No, I can't do. Oh, let me all. Yeah. Like, or you could take the picture because I can't do this. Photos because I'm at you know I'm out of out of iCloud yeah, storage. Yeah. People, just get ready. Just get your photo cameras ready. Yeah, that's yeah. all we ask. It saves the selfie. Don't stop and go. Oh, hey, will you? take this picture and then hand your phone to the guy who doesn't know how it works right. <laughs> or they love when they do the group photo and they want everybody's phone to be 
Send it to everybody. Airdrop yeah. it. What is uh-huh. wrong with you? But hey, you know what? I agree with your mom, man. We are so fortunate, dude. I'll never forget. I probably told this story before, but uh, like right when Jackass came out, um, the the first spring break, it would would have been March of two thousand one, mm-hmm. and I'm at the largest nightclub in the USA. It's called Club La Vila in okay. Panama City, Florida, okay. and like two thousand one, they didn't have cell phones no. with cameras. They had everybody had the wind what? up cardboard disposable camera, and literally. Everybody had, had the wind up disposable. Or what if camera. they, when they went to go, wind it up, wind it up, they didn't do the flash. Oh, let me do it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, but everybody had those, and like I was, this is my first experience being, like, uh, in a mass crowd situation. It's spring break, right. you know, like it's my first time being in most. That's, that's energy crowd. right there. And spring break is could not have been more like purely the MTV demographic. So like I am a. Pigeon. Yeah. I, I am a loaf of bread in a pigeon poop. <laughs> yeah. Just pop, 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 like, and uh, and 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 there was this VIP bar. Like, uh, what was going on there as well that weekend? Me doing a, a personal appearance and the final ever uh, wrestling event for WCW gotcha. before they got bought up by the WWE. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's this wrestler like sitting at the bar in the VIP, you know, this huge guy, his, his wrestling name was Canyon. Okay. And I sit down and I'm like, ah, I'm just, I'm just like, so like at my wits end, I'm so frustrated. I sit down next to him and, and I can finally kind of relax. And I just turn to him and I go, dude, one more picture, one more autograph. I am going to snap. Ah, I'm just so, but, and, and he looks at me, he, goes, he shakes his head. He's just looking at me with the, the kind of disgust. He says, Hey man, stop and think about a moment where nobody ever wants another picture or autograph. Imagine, yeah. you know. And I like, and I thought like, ooh, like I don't want that. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you know? right, the only thing right. I say is get annoying when you take a picture. I said no. The minute you stop asking me, that's when I'm out of a job. Yeah. That's what right, I said too. Right, right. A, if you don't know who the fuck I am, mm-hmm. I'm not doing my job. Yeah, crowds like like too big of a crowd, unmanageable. Like that's there's a no, certain just, there's a certain point you can't accommodate, and like too many like in one day. Like there's a certain point I don't have any in me. And it's amazing when it's that many people how it how it escalates. Oh, dude, it's so funny. That's what's so weird to see the people get excited and get angry, and it just uh, builds up to where it gets to anger. I'm like, what is this going on? Dude, <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, like, I don't know about like Beatles frenzies, but like Scott Randolph and I, like we were laughing so hard. Um, in, in Australia, because I made the connection that like, well, like when one person notices you, and then like it's like a chain reaction. Everybody mm-hmm. notices you, and they all turn into zombies, like The Walking Dead. They're just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're yeah. all zombies. Go photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they even kind of walk like that, like they're creeping, you know? Like it's just like, oh, dude, the zombies are after me, dude. It's, it's, it's like a Walmart Michael. in Oklahoma. Like yep. it just yeah. starts fucking. <laughs> On Black Friday. <laughs> yeah, totally. Then, like at the time, The Walking Dead was like the biggest show on TV, so we were just howling about it because every time we looked at it, like, yep. Zombies, they, come. They, they just turned into <sighs> brain eaters. Hey, but we love you fans. We love it. That's Dude, love it, mean. man. And like, I, and this, I, I'm, I'm going to not go on to a whole diatribe on this, but we watch near-death experience videos okay. and people talking about their life review where you experience your whole life from, like you actually right. have the same experience that you feel the feelings that you made everybody feel. Right. And so everyone, every one of these little insignificant encounters at this point, I'm at like the highest level of <laughs> like, awesome. I want to bring the maximum amount of joy that I possibly right. can to each person because I know I'm going to experience that. Same. Like mm-hmm. uh, in my life review. Same, mm-hmm. same. And because I've been so like hyper obsessed about the idea of the life review and 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 you know i'm gonna have the experience of everybody who i had an impact on so every little encounter every person is like the biggest priority for me yep. and by behaving that way like it just brings it it, it like changes the tide of like the universe yeah. where like things oh, yeah. just start working out you know like i'm a, i've eaten every meal in the like general population right. mass food buffet, right, right. Oh, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> like taking as many pictures yeah. as possible, like and, and I don't know, I'm having the time of my life. So but what's great is you notice that when you do that out of the gate, when you blast it out though, they kind of leave you alone. 
because they see you all. Like I'm saying, like every time I've been on the cruise, every oh, no. time they, out of the gate, it's crazy. They, 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 no, they don't. <laughs> 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 Maybe because I'm just a regular. I've no. been on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's the first time no, you're no. doing it, so they, that's probably why. No, they never leave you alone. Like, hey, let's get another photo. <laughs> <laughs> why? You took about 80 of them. Why? Yeah. Why? For the love of God. Dude, man, what else? Did I, I, I want to tell you, Joey, that I knew I was a fan of you, and like I knew that, that we were gonna have a wildly entertaining conversation. I was not prepared for how much I was gonna enjoy. Oh no, shit, man! The, 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 dude, like yeah. really, and and we could talk for hours, bro. Seriously, when, when, whenever I've met you, like just a couple times, but uh, particularly on this ship because it's more you know recent of course but you just have this like unflappable like oh yeah like i can imagine like you finding out like you know some terrible news right. and being like yeah okay i am <laughs> no it's true but yeah. i'm saying that no bullshit and my mom my mom stop be debbie down for a second i'm just saying like she had diagnosed breast cancer then she was she was good you know i don't didn't do like like chemo but then she had to get a test again she was freaking out i'm like why are you freaking out mom she goes well what if i have you but do you have? You don't even know yet. Uh, if you have it, then cry, scream, kick the fucking, do whatever you want. But you don't know yet, so shut the fuck up, stop it. Yeah. Life is too short to worry about things that are beyond your control. Right. That's the, that's for me. That's, that's my way of life and that kind of stuff. I always try to look at the bright side of things. Obviously, there are dark, there are things that happen in yeah. our lives. But you always got to look positive. And the same thing for you. When you start to have that outcome positive, believe it or not, it sounds fucking cliche and shitty. But positive things start happening. Things start sure. just rolling. You're like, oh shit, okay, I get it now. Yeah, you know it's what I mean? like what you put in, like and get out. Like yep. the, you know, the universe just begins to conspire in your favor. If you put DNA everywhere and spray it, someone's gonna get pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you get a baby yeah. from it. <laughs> yeah. it's like, I, I really think that you're the epitome of don't sweat the small stuff. Correct. And even yeah. the big steps, it's not gonna matter in a hundred nope. years. Fuck it. Exactly. No one's, gonna <laughs> yeah. fuck, no one's gonna fuck about me in about another probably 50, 60 years. Yeah, no for shit. sure. Um, uh, my up. sources have told me that you have a uh, tour with AJ coming up in March. I do. Uh, is that March, true? That is 100% true. We did like a small little tour, like an idea. We did it for a 90s uh, kind of show in Tampa. And people loved it so much. We did a small theater. We sang each other's songs, made jokes, fucked around. We had a wheel where it was just different songs. Sang each other's songs. So AJ's a Backstreet Boy. He, yes. So okay, he would sing it. instant stuff. I, I would sing his Backstreet Boy <laughs> I just want to keep that to myself. Yeah, 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 don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't tell anybody you know that. Yeah. Don't tell anybody you know that shit. Yeah. But yeah, so we started doing this and we, we, we put it up on sale. We did East Coast, West Coast, a little bit of South and they sold out within a week. It's been great. You know, that's not huge, but just theater venues. Exactly. And, you know, where can they expect. get tickets? Uh, uh, Ticketmaster, uh, Spotify. They can go on uh, AJ, and Joey, and the letter N, AJ, if I'm not mistaken. I got to double check that, but it's Joey and N, AJ, the letter N. Who was it that told us about StubHub? We were oh, was the, the, StubHub the, the, the guy that we... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The guy from the guy Stub from the Hub guy. is... Uh, not like particularly good for the, the artist or the promoter. Or the, oh, really? I don't yeah. even know. That's well, why we, we, we found this out. Like, what, what, what's, and this is a dick move. Like, this is just like a, uh, what do you call it? Sabotaging someone's business model. But I'm, I'm helping people out by, by doing this. True. Um, apparently, I'm told, allegedly, StubHub like, invests um, in, uh, in, in uh, opt search search engine optimization gotcha. so that like wait, if you're going to google joey fatone and aj right. the top of the list is going to be StubHub. get your tickets to aj and gotcha. and, and joey um however um they, they buy out they, all they, the tickets they, they, they're scalpers it's gotcha. scalpers so they buy the I know tickets people oh, wow. they, they, they're just scalpers Not they, buy, they buy the tickets and then they they they, they resell they, them. they resell them for a a like disgustingly inflated price. Like you're paying way we more. We try to avoid that stuff. Yeah, we're, we're trying but, to avoid that. But because they spend the money on the optimization, they're the first thing on the Google thing. Yeah. So they get the most clicks. And so more people are buying from StubHub and they're paying way more than they should. And none of it's going to Joey. Oh, uh, yeah. Before that, back <laughs> yeah. in the day, not mentioning any groups and bands, but old boot groups and bands back in the day would scalp their own tickets. Obviously, there was no ticket master, no stuff. Sure. But they would scalp their own tickets to make their own money. So he, the person would buy the front row and then he'd have somebody go out oh, yeah, I'll give wow. you for a thousand bucks 500 for first oh, seat shit. 200 bucks not even it's it's their tickets yeah that I mean wasn't scalping, scalping illegal, illegal? <laughs> wasn't it scal like people well, were scalping, like hush, you hush, hush about, about face it? value you can but scalping you know you can't jack up the price I mean you, can, you can't sell a ticket scalping. though <laughs> 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 you're chopping the shit out of it yeah but it's, it's one of those things where yeah I mean it depends but it's weird how back in the day and again that's why I think that's what stuff up's doing but it was 
artists, some or certain artists were doing that. Yeah, and if yeah. I got that, if I got it that wrong completely, I'm sorry, StubHub. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. But is that? I mean, StubHub the same thing as Ticketmaster, or I would assume just, it is just, though. Just, yeah, I mean, just, that's what I would think. You're just getting it from anything. I mean, but, but for Ticketmaster or Spotify, I mean, what we did, I believe, it's like we set, put them on sale for Ticketmaster first, so people got a first chance if they if they're yeah. signed on to Ticketmaster. Same thing with Spotify. If you're signed on the next day, the tickets went after it. And oh, then you the can next buy day, tickets on Spotify too. Yeah, now you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, hey. it's crazy too because on YouTube, it, I, I was watching a uh, Jethro Tall music video. They'll tell you con- the concert where it's yeah, coming. Yeah, and then the tickets for sale in the it, it, in your region, like yep. that's fucking wild. It's wild. It's now. crazy. Yeah, they they know computers everything. are taking over the world. But you can't do it with comedy. You can only do it with music right now. Really? Yeah, because I was, I was like, man, this is great. We should try to get right. like some of Steve's YouTube content where it shows up, and they're like, we're only doing it with yeah, music. Yes. Yeah, I think they'll grow. Hey, uh, we want to let you go, but I can't. Before I give a special treat to the audience, <laughs> um, a, a, among my Wild Ride crew, we have a musician, and it's the gorgeous Paul Brisky, and he's just been patiently over Good, here okay. off camera, and I, I can't just know wait. that he's got great stuff to he's ask. He's going to give you so a back massage. Oh, wow. I'm going to recuse myself, and everybody, the gorgeous Paul Brisky. Oh, thanks. Hey, Paul. How you doing? What's up, Joey? How are you? I'm fantastic. Good no to meet pressure, you. Paul. No pressure. Yeah, that is a lot of pressure. Now, I was just sitting over here wondering, like... Um, it's not even necessarily a music question, but when Instinct broke up or it's kind of just stopped touring mm-hmm. together, like, and then it became clearer and clearer, like, oh, but maybe we're not getting together right. at all. Like, was there a day where it's like, oh shit, it's over? And did you have any sort of identity crisis in that time? The yeah, again, was there more? To no, that? no, that's Sorry. that's really. I it. think the day that it actually one of the days where it was like, hey, I'm gonna do my own thing. I think it was one of. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I think. I think I can't remember what year, since you're so damn good at years, I'm not, I suck. It was the last challenge for the children. Miami, 2001. Probably was 2001, 2002, something like that. Anyway, it was when we actually had a conversation about it. And it was like, listen, man, I think I'm going to do my solo. I don't know if we're going to do this anymore. I think we're pretty much done. And I was like, well, shit, okay. Now what? Literally, my brain went to now what? Meanwhile, we're do- still doing stuff with insane, but it's it's going to fizzle out. So I was like, fuck, what do I do? Felt heartbroken a little bit felt betrayed you're young as hell so you don't know what the hell but I'm starting to think and I literally was like now I get the chance to do the things that I never got a chance to do before and I'm saying that's what led to me doing Broadway led to me doing I've always been a theater kid me and my my stuff's always been theater so to do obviously within sync and everything my pinnacle was doing Broadway so that's for me my thing I never was really like oh I'm bummed out that's it my life is over (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah but some people go through that which is amazing again that's why for some reason I've always felt my feet were always on the ground like oddly enough I think it helped me being no bullshit famous at an old a younger age and the reason why is because then when I got back home everything humbled myself a little bit like for instance even though I had money I had a house my me and my my future wife at that time well we were living together we just had a kid and it was like when I got home it was like all right now you're doing laundry write a check I was like I didn't know how to write checks because I was still mm-hmm. young I know how to do a lot of things so I started doing things in my house and being, <laughs> what are you saying you fuck <laughs> He said, he still doesn't. Shut up. <laughs> still came out of it. No. I, I still don't. All right, checks. I just used I just used a debit card. <laughs> but yeah, it was like one of those things where I never felt like I felt. Of course, it was like holy shit. Now what? I mean, that was we were in our height of our career. We're not doing anything now. Like how is that even? Why are we not? Was my thought. Right, right. Well, and you're like part of this group so much. Like it's my life. It's like who am I without in sync? And were you like? Hey guys, this is Joey from In Sync. Was there a moment where it's like, guys, like Joey Fatone, like they don't have to say from In Sync anymore. You know, you know what? It never really bothered me. Certain times it does when they're throwing it down someone's throat. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if they're trying to promote it to a like, hey, guess what, guys? Don't say bye bye bye, but act now and you can go to Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> and see Joey Fatone. <laughs> it's like, don't say bye bye bye. You can say Chuck E. Cheese, just don't say bye bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. it was always like, okay, come on. But it never really, it had still, and it's the funny part is, is as I've gotten older and things that I've done yeah. have now made my own name. But yeah, there's sure. so many times it's, hey, you remember that guy, Joey, Joey from who? But now it's either Joey Fatone from NSYNC, then it's either Joey Fatone from Jokers, or we've seen that guy do dance. It's, it's interesting, like I said earlier, the demographic has spread so much that it's so many different genres of different people that know me from Big Factory Wedding Movie and shit. Yeah, like I was going to say that one. I feel like that was the first time I was like, oh, wow, this dude's like, oh, do he, his own he, things. He, do some shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. No. We were shooting that actually 
when we, I was with NSYNC, there was, uh, there was a, a movie we were going to do with Playtone, with Tom Hanks' company, Playtone. Mm-hmm. Right after they did That Thing You Do. That was mm-hmm. the name. That was the, that yeah, was the movie. I, I, I said something else. Yes, you that said... You, I said Can't Hardly Wait. Yep. It's called That Thing You Do. Yeah. After he did that film, he wanted to do almost like a Beatles help movie with us. Mm. And we kept saying, maybe we should do something like a Grease and we'll get Britney and this and that. It's like, again, the height of our career. Never agreed. Went back and forth, went back and forth. I went to the office to Playtone just to say hi to them. And Gary Getzman, who's one of the uh, his, one of Tom's uh, producers on the shows and all the stuff that he does. I go, hey, there's an audition that they're casting right now for a movie called My Big Fat Greek Wedding. There's a friend of mine that was in the office. She goes, you'd be probably perfect then. It'd be right around the schedule. It's a $5 million budget movie. They're doing the audition. Go in. I went, okay. So I went in and read the lines. Nia knew who I was, but the casting, I was like, oh, he's a fucking singer. He's a boy band. It's like glitter. He can't mm-hmm. sing. So I went in audition and I got the part. Chuck and I'm going to call out Paul because he said, dude, he was hilarious in my big fat Greek wedding. He's great. Isn't he? <laughs> my family always did the like, hey, sick. we're going to kill yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like that line, like we love that. Said that line 80 million times. That shit was not funny in my head. <laughs> At all. I have a question for Paul and you. If, if So Paul's doing music and uh, it, before he blows up, what's the best route for him to get like a manager so he doesn't get fucked or he has a... A, a partner that he's with, like, what are some of the pitfalls that he can avoid to it's, not get? It's over? fucking tough. And I'll tell you why. The only reason why is because my manager uh, has been working with me since I've known him since I was seventeen. Me and him worked together at Universal. Wow. He has been very business savvy on certain things. Worked for the uh, NBA for this whole freaking halftime thing they used to do, and then started touring with us with NSYNC. My guys hired him because they knew he's like a good tour manager, so mm-hmm. he became a tour manager assistant. Then as he got older, he's like, hey, man, I'm going to start managing people. I'll manage you. And then weirdly, I'm just saying, because we've had such a longevity together, it's interesting for me to see other people with their managers and their people where, like, me and him are so open with shit. People are afraid to tell their artists, don't do that or it's going to do this. Or, you know, that's, I, I like that. That's great. What the mm-hmm. fuck is he doing? I'm like, no, no. Right. Tell me everything. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to find someone. That's what you have to find, someone that's going to give you straight up honesty not to say he's going to persuade you to do what you, what that person wants to do, but give you that, hey, here's the option. Here's what's going on. This is what's good. You did a great job in that, but this shit sucked ass. Yeah, yeah. So if my manager, Joe, would be here, he'd be fucking ripping shit left and right on stuff. Sometimes I'm like, hey, that sounds great, but don't do that song ever again. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why? I like that song. He goes, nobody liked it. <laughs> so and we, we feed off each other. Get, get that honesty is what really needs to happen. Nice. It can be from anywhere, but for me personally, my shit started. <laughs> if we would have done that... <laughs> If we would have flushed the toilet during the podcast, <laughs> you would have been fucking yeah, so I pissed, dude. I, I, I thought the same thing exactly when I hit flush. Here, here, sit down here. <laughs> oh, man. Steve's like, Paul, come in. I AKA, pee I got to pee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's no, like, I I Paul's said, got a question. I got yeah. Yeah. Right? That's true. That is true. But uh, but you know, I'm working on being more laid back and and, and a cooler guy. Trying to be like Joey. That's right. Yeah, chill, big man. time, man. I'm really chill. working towards. I'm trying. I aspire to be more like you. I don't know if you want to do that. I want to say <laughs> that. Go that far. But no, again, man, it's just it's, life's too fucking short. Yeah, it is. Think about. I always think about it this way. And we've always talked about. People talk about how you only have so many Christmases now. Mm. When you were young, you had so many Christmases ahead or Hanukkah, whatever the fuck you, you deal with. Right. But now that. Shorter yeah. and shorter. How many Christmas do I really have left now? Well, I'm 46. I'll be 47 on fucking Sunday. Maybe another 40. Maybe another 50. I'm not going to be 90. Fuck that. I'll probably be 80 by the time I'm dead. So another 40, 40 Christmases, maybe. That's true. As a kid, you, it feels like you have infinity Christmases. Wow. 40, you guys 40. said something earlier, too. You were like, don't sweat the small stuff. That's the key. But if you think about it, it's all small stuff. Yeah, because nothing is actually matter. big. Yeah. Nothing's going to matter in 100 years. Yeah. Yeah. This shoot. So, dude, this two man, shall like, pass. Like, yeah, exactly. ch- check it out, dude. Like, with Joey Fatone, absolutely nothing has been off limits. Not one damn thing. It's just so much fun. All the I juicy so. stuff that we could possibly think to ask you, I think we've asked. Yeah. There's no, well, again, it's just, it's, it's, my, my shit is really kind of an open, like, book in the sense of, like, when people ask me, like, yeah, I'll tell you. It's just like, yeah. it is what it is, you know? And, and 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 like maybe this is just super like ego <laughs> ego crazy, but uh-huh. I, but I'm feeling like man, I feel like we asked like juicier questions, and we were just like screw it, like we just had the balls to be like, what's up with getting timber lakes? <laughs> Go for it. Oh, I've had one time out Howard tell me Howard Stern came up the first time I did an interview. He's like, so uh, what does Timberlake finger smell like? 
Wow. <laughs> That's the first thing he said to me. Strong question. Strong, very. Yeah, but, but like, you know, you hopefully you said, like, let me give you something real to whiff on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to smell that. That's been yeah. the ringer. <laughs> Timberlake's fingers. You kidding me? I'm like a, a, a school cafeteria of fish fingers over here. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch lady fingers. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, shit, man. Um, I think I got a belly flop contest you, in five it? minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I swear dude, to God. That's that time flies when you're fucking having fun that's shooting it. shit. I swear to God, dude. The universe is just looking out for me, man. I gotta, I literally. Because it's about to go fucking downhill if we go yeah, anymore. Got, <laughs> I'm hosting the, the belly flop contest on the cruise ship. Right now, so dude, I love you, man. Thank hey, you so man. much. Oh, come on, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank Hell you, guys. Good night, everybody. Yeah, thank you, okay. peanut gallery, man. God, <laughs> we gotta stop doing this shit in a van, dude. It was so hilarious how we bolted out of this room on the cruise ship and just ran towards the pool, making sure to go right through the buffet grabbing just plates and plates of cake. I grabbed as much cake as I could hold. Joey grabbed a bunch of extra cake, so he's stuffing it in my face while I'm running to the pool. It was just the most ridiculous scene, man. I fell in love with Joey Fatone so much, and uh, I, I do believe that we have done what's called a double upload today, so you get to see... No, 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 that's next week. Yeah, that's next week. Ah, next week. Next week is the, the vlog of the whole cruise ship experience. And, mind you, next week is also episode 200. And I've spilled uh, some beans about that in my Reddit forum, which uh, grew pretty substantially. Um, yeah, so if you're not in the Reddit, the Steve Raw Reddit, get in there. And, and actually, you know what? Do whatever you want because I, you can do no wrong. I love you. You're my street team. And so I want you to just do whatever you feel like and thank you because I love you. Yeah.